all up And I just keep on making the same mistakes Hoping that you'd understand That baby now, oh no, no Timmy and T loving arms Ooh yeah Kiss me under the light of a thousand stars And oh darling, place your head on my beating heart I'm thinking out loud Maybe we found love right where we are Or maybe we found love right where we are And we found love right where we are That's crazy. I thought we'd have been moving by now. But uh, uh good evening everybody. My name is John. Thank you for listening to me. I come out here to invest money towards my music and my future and my newly acquired daughter. Uh, if you guys would like to make an investment, all donations are greatly appreciated. Our blessings. Either way, have a great night. I'm gonna get into this next song. Um we'll kick some old school out uh, for you guys. If you know the words, sing along, say space, we go. <laughs> I don't love her, try to tell myself You can see it in my eyes So don't deny her, I can't hey, fool no one Hey viewers, James Calm, your half-assed reporter, the guy on the bike And it is starting to snow here on the Lower East Side But we're gonna look at some art and we're gonna run in here To the front room gallery going to take a uh, look at an interesting show by Joanne Unger titled Pain Relief and uh, well for all you pain heads this will be interesting because Joanna works in a technique of encaustic painting and uh, well I think this show is interestingly titled pain relief because a lot of the uh, and we'll have to get up here a little closer and look at some of these the little silhouettes the images that you see here are packages of various kinds of products that relieve pain in various ways I think this one is titled 10 boxes Daniel do we know what these are boxes of I think those are boxes of Botox. <laughs> okay. Botox? Well, I'm looking and saying, isn't that great? At least the surface is not wrinkling and puckering on this one. <laughs> Probably because it's bald leftover Botox. Uh, you know, some of these are groupings and there are, I don't know, maybe 15 paintings in here, so we'll not get the titles, but we'll just take and kind of sweep over some of them. Daniel and I were talking earlier and uh, discussing some of her techniques in the way that uh, Daniel was saying that a lot of these are almost more like casts and that she uh, makes a little mold and I guess maybe she's got starts out with a board backing and then uh, through some kind of a process of Pouring and does she actually do some painting on these as well as she st as she starts to pour the the pigment on there or is all the color contained within the liquid wax that she pours in? Do we know? She does some painting on the boxes. Okay. But, but she does that before anything else. So if you actually look in here, you can see where this is kind of like a little milk carton. There's a little triangle top there. Also, I was talking about the way that uh, you have this kind of a fade from the orange over to a kind of a violet, and uh, a lot of that is accomplished by, I guess, pouring in the wax and then sort of tilting it so that you have a very thin layer of the pigment, pigmented wax on one side, and then as it pulls up on the other side, the pigment gets darker. This is one of the large pieces. This is Johnny Walker Red. 
And Daniel was talking about how they've been uh, encouraging Joanna to go work larger. And so for this particular piece and some of the other larger pieces, she's actually, instead of using a giant box of Johnny Walker, she took a photograph of the package, blew it up, made digital prints, and then uh, broke it up into these smaller panels and then kind of tiled it together. So this piece is titled, oh, it's actually Johnny Walker Black, 2018, Wax Board Paint and Pigment. She doesn't even mention the fact that she's got uh, digital prints in there. This is 59 by 48 inches. And, uh, yeah, well, look at the edge. That's kind of interesting. Also, you can see where uh, some of the little panels, you know, parts of them are thicker and thinner, and it's nice the way that uh, you get a contrast of the three-dimensional layers when you've got them against the wall like that. Okay, we're gonna look at a couple of other larger pieces. It's titled Five Tower Bases, 2018. Waxboard Paint and Pigments. It's 23 by 20. I kind of uh, enjoy the the way that these forms, the boxes, kind of look like they're sinking into some kind of colored fluids. I think this one is titled Ubi Modern Wax Board Paint Pigment, and this is 17 by 17. It's another one of the larger pieces. It's titled Modern Moose 2019 Wax Board Paint Pigments. Well, I think in the press release they talk about uh, how some of this imagery relates to cubism, and Daniel was saying that's kind of uh, kind of ironic because in a lot of ways these are like little cast cubes. And I think it's interesting, especially they were mentioning cubism, but I also see a relationship to some of uh, Paul Clay's work. And I guess you could sort of say that Paul Clay was a kind of a derivation or used certain cubistic devices in his work, but I like the uh, the gradations of the color and also how from corner to corner the various tiles, the various blocks kind of vary. As I said, we've got a lot of pieces here, so I'm not going to give you the titles, but we'll take a close-up look at some of them and you can almost uh, well, use your imagination and think about what kind of packaging, packaging this looks like. Actually, I like the little, the ribbing on this. Very nice and linear. And I think also that it's not just like analgesics, but uh, various other products that might help to relieve, well, the misery, the suffering of life. So that might include, like we're looking at the Botox, but also uh, chocolate. We're gonna wrap up looking at this piece. This is titled Botox. 2018 wax board paint and pigment. 
So I would assume that these are the same, the same boxes, except that this one is a blown up photographic digital print that is then has the, uh, the encaustic worked in over the top. Now I assume that her, her prints that she's working with already kind of start out with a basic color palette that she's working with, right? Seems like she's kind of starting out with the greens and the, the oranges and then uh, I guess you could layer it and get transparent planes of color over the top of that. Uh, we were also talking about the fact, so <laughs> If you're painters out there and you find that you want to maybe delve into some experiments with encaustic, uh, some of this stuff can be very, very toxic. I think they're saying that she uses refined beeswax and various types of paraffin that melts at high temperature. And I don't know whether Joanna uses this, but a lot of other people also mix in various kinds of oils, um, solvents, varnishes, damar, things like that. So when you start to heat these things up, it can get to be pretty, uh, pretty poisonous. Anyway, this is a little run through of a series of encaustic paintings by Joanne Unger, titled Pain Relief. Here at Front Room Gallery, what's the address, Daniel? 48 Hester Street. 48 Hester Street on the Lower East Side. You can like this, share, recommend it to your friends, and you can subscribe. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. But we always ask you to say, thank you, Kate. And that's my little show, everybody. This is your stop. Thank you again for listening. Once again, my name is John. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all of that crap. Hashtag stay positive, test negative. Oh, all right. right. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, Everything John. Thanks, Thanks, John. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your night and our blessings.